Now, we're all, I think, uh, familiar with uh, the history, the legacy, the background to the bilateral relationship, the longstanding strong ties. You yourself described the tremendous growth and flourishing in India's relationship, partnership with the United States, as well as with others in the West. And there's just no question that there are tensions between those two trends. So get, can you give us a, just a sense of how India squares that circle, reconciles those, uh, those pressures? Uh, you know, I'd make four, four or five points about Russia so that people understand, you know, why, what is the importance of that relationship. I mean, first of all, if you look at the map of Eurasia, there's a very simple, obvious strategic proposition there, which is you have, a, you know, if you look at the big countries of that, of the Eurasian landmass, it, you, it makes sense for those countries who don't have direct borders with each other to develop strategic relationships, which is how they, uh, they serve each other's interests. And for us, our own history after independence, we've never really had uh, anything other than a positive experience uh, with the Soviet Union and then uh, with Russia. Uh, secondly, during the period of the Cold War, when uh, the U.S. and Western countries generally tended to prefer, at least in our region, dictatorships like Pakistan, uh, we actually had uh, a 40-year period where uh, the West was primarily arming Pakistan, and we turned to the Soviet Union as a as a military partner. So we have you know, a long uh, uh, defense and security relationship other than the, uh, the strategic and the geopolitical equations uh, of uh, which I spoke about. Uh, the third point, uh, I would say, is uh, economic. Uh, today, if you look at India, uh, the, na you know, the, the nature of the Indian economy, we are large natural resources consumers. Uh, and for us, uh, uh, the natural resource exporters of the world hold a very special significance, you know. And uh, uh, so it could be a Russia, it could be an Australia, it could be an Indonesia, it could be uh, the countries of the Gulf uh, for energy requirements. Uh, and uh, uh, as Russia uh, today turns more towards Asia because of its uh, current uh, uh, tensions uh, with the West. Uh, for us, uh, there are uh, certain economic complementarities here which, which come to fore. So there is today, I would say, a kind of a geopolitical case for the relationship, uh, a military security case, uh, economic one uh, as, as well. Uh, now, how do you reconcile this with a growing relationship with the U.S.? I would even say growing relationship with Europe because that relationship has also grown. Uh, as I said, look, it's a, it's a multipolar world. Different poles deal with each other. None, you know, we're no longer in a world where the relationships are exclusive. Uh, every country wants to get the best out of the international order in the most effective way it can. So it requires, uh, you know, a certain amount of care and I would say perhaps dexterity to, to manage it. But it has to be done because, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not feasible to expect that big countries constrain uh, their options and don't deal with other countries, not because of their interests, but because somebody else uh, has a problem with those countries. Uh, another 12 years after that, really to come to some kind of uh, uh, modus vivendi. Uh, and that happened in 1988. Uh, uh, and the basis of that was that we would develop a relationship ensuring that there is peace and tranquility on the border and uh, on the border areas because the border is not agreed to. The entire border, which is about 3,500 kilometers, is disputed. Uh, and so you you make sure the border is peaceful so that you know other parts of the relationship can move 
Now, to make sure the border was peaceful, you had a series of agreements in 93 and 96, uh, in 2005, 2006, 2012. So uh, each one of these agreements went into greater and greater detail on how to ensure that the border remained peaceful and stable. Now, the problem was in 2020, uh, uh, despite these very explicit uh, agreements, uh, we, ha we saw that the Chinese, in, we were all in the middle of COVID at that time, if you remember, uh, moved large number of forces in violation of these agreements uh, to the line of actual control. And uh, this once troops, and we responded in kind, and once troops were deployed very close up, which is very dangerous, uh, you know, it was likely a mishap would happen, and, uh, and it did happen. Uh, so there was a clash, and uh, a number of troops died on either side. Uh, and that has since, uh, uh, in a sense, overshadowed uh, the relationship. So it, until we are able to restore peace and tranquility on the border and ensure that the agreements which uh, we have signed up to are adhered, uh, it's obviously difficult to carry on with the rest of the relationship. So what has been the focus for the last four years is to, in the first instance, at least disengage the troops, which means that they go back to the camp, you know, to the military bases from which they traditionally operate, because right now both sides have troops who are deployed forward. Uh, and when I said 75% of it has been sorted out. I was, you know, I was asked in a way to quantify it to give a sense. It's only of the disengagement. So uh, the that's one part of the problem. Uh, and the main issue right now is the patrolling. You know, how do we, uh, both of us, uh, uh, I would say, uh, patrol uh, up to the line of uh, actual control. And right now the patrolling arrangements uh, after 2020 have been disturbed. So we've been able to sort out uh, much of the disengagement, the friction points, but the, some of the patrolling issues uh, need to be resolved. But once we deal with the disengagement, there is the larger issue, which is both of us have brought very large number of troops uh, up to the border. So there is what we call the de-escalation issue. Uh, and uh, uh, then there is the larger, the next step is really how do you deal with the rest of the relationship because right now the relationship is uh, very significantly uh, disturbed. Uh, that said, there are, uh, there are other issues that we need to look at. I mean, you have two, two countries who are neighbors, uh, who are uh, unique in the sense that they are the only two countries with over a billion people uh, and who are both rising in the global order uh, and who often have overlapping peripheries as well, other than the fact that they have a common border. Uh, so it's it's, it's very uh, so so it's 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 really a very complicated issue. I think uh, in the global, you know, if you look today in global politics, uh, the the parallel rises of India and China 